I'm Mike Breen, Public Awareness Officer for the American Mathematical Society, and I'm talking with Ted Hill, who is the author of a book that's published by the AMS and the MAA, Pushing Limits, from West Point to Berkeley and beyond. And you would think from West Point to Berkeley would be enough, but this is actually beyond that, too. And so, Ted, this is a book that's chock full of adventures. Almost every page has an adventure on it, if not more than one per page. Could you tell people a little bit about the book and what you've been through? I'll be glad to. Thanks for having me, Mike. Uh, I'm really excited about the book coming out and grateful for this opportunity to say a few words about it. Well, see, the book's a memoir about some of my experiences, starting with undergraduate days at West Point in the 60s to present day, what I call a permanent sabbatical. It's full-time traveling, uh, full giving talks, doing research, having adventures, just a uh, perfect retirement. I had a somewhat unorthodox career in mathematics right from the start. When I Entered a PhD program at Berkeley. I was almost 29 years old, and as far as I know, the only Vietnam veteran. And Berkeley had taken a chance on me. I didn't have any formal math degrees before there. Here they admitted a former Army Ranger and admitted me as a walk-on student, so I had no support, but I wanted to give it a shot. And I'd always loved adventure, and at the time I entered Berkeley, I was just returning from living one year in Göttingen where I took some side trips behind the Iron Curtain, camping and hitchhiking in Central and East Africa. And I figured the PhD process would be another such adventure, slightly a different nature, and it certainly lived up to that. So, yeah, Sorry sorry to interrupt, but you were at Gertigan on a, on a Fulbright? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, sorry, go ahead, Ted. So when I finished my dissertation, I stumbled into a tenure-track job at Georgia Tech, and thinking back over the previous years, I realized how happy I'd been as a graduate student. And with almost no belongings and just free to think, math, and travel and meet people. So I decided to continue that lifestyle. This is more or less the story of these experiences. And so when you say you're on permanent sabbatical, does that mean uh, once every six or seven years you have to go back to work? <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm working more now than I usually do because I don't have any excuses about committee assignments and meetings and stuff. So. <laughs> Is there an anecdote you'd like to share with us? Well, I, I got very fortunate, and when I returned from the Vietnam War, the Army sent me to St. Louis and got out of the Army on, on a loophole I found, and I wanted to go back and study and at least give it a shot at taking a Ph.D., and I couldn't apply for school that year, so I found a temporary job at Washington University. And I found, I put an ad in the paper looking for a cheap place to live because I needed to save all my money. I had no scholarship. So uh, a real estate company got a hold of me and offered me a 15-room mansion on Lindell Boulevard in St. Louis for $15 a month. And I just couldn't believe my good luck. I later found out that they were going to demolish the house and put up a McDonald's. But in the meantime, I had it. And I had this huge house and I Opened it to all kinds of visitors, math visitors, non-math visitors, friends of friends. Everybody knew if you needed a warm meal, not necessarily a very good one, a warm meal, a place to put your sleeping bag, you could go to 4000 Lindell Boulevard and there'd be. So after I had that experience, I just saw how wonderful it was to be able to share my good fortune and be a little bit creative in housing. And I just continued that my whole career. So I found a place on campus at Georgia Tech was a 1915 Craftsman bungalow, a beautiful old house with three working fireplaces and beam ceilings. And the university was had a schedule for demolition. I held on to it for quite a while and fixed it up myself. And all my colleagues, colleagues around the world called it the Hill Hotel. Many people ended up staying there. I think at least a dozen countries, people from a dozen countries stayed there more than a quarter a semester. So it was a wonderful experience. So, Ted, I, I thought to give people even more of an overview, I'll just quote from your preface here that you're saying the book, you've written it for baby boomers who missed or want to relive Haight-Ashbury in the Vietnam War, for armchair travelers who want to vicariously experience shoestring third world travel, for prospective math majors who fear a career in mathematics would necessarily be too dull, and the, uh, the book is definitely proof that it isn't, and for anyone else curious about how at least one unorthodox research mathematician thinks and works. Now, I think that's a very good summary. Well, Ted, thanks very much for taking the time out of your uh, permanent sabbatical to talk to us. Uh, again, <laughs> that's Ted Hill. He's the author of Pushing Limits from West Point to Berkeley and Beyond, which is co-published uh, with the AMS and the MAA.